welcome back to my channel in today's video we are going to finish our kitten so we're going to get uh, this darker patch of fur drawn in and then we're probably going to go around and just darken up a few other areas and then finish our kitten so everything you need as usual is listed down below in the description if you've got any questions do let me know okay so i've just zoomed you in now what we know is we've got a very dark patch of fur along here just going into some darker white fur so because I know that this dark fur here is dark um, and we're just going to map that in hard pressure with the cold grey worm along here and we're going to go about halfway across or maybe about a third across with the cold grey one as our base layer and I'm pressing hard, I'm going to really smooth out the two for this paper Okay, and then I'm going to get my um, dark indigo and I'm just going to bring in some of that blue, oops sorry, into this fur. Now I'm, I am looking at kind of where this fur direction is going, obviously this is going to end up really dark and black but I still want to sort of get some kind of fur direction mapped in just so that I know what's going on so just coming in with this dark indigo and it's also this is also going to um, correlate to the fact that underneath our black we have the dark indigo, so it's just reflecting in this fur. Okay, and then I'm going to take my black and I'm going to make sure I'm going right up to that paw and just creating some little fur details. So by that we're doing, the black is coming into what we've already drawn. You're creating that little edge. Around those white lines there. And then I'm pressing hard and I'm just bringing in this black along the bottom of the fur here. And that's yeah we're gonna just keep this black coming up here so I'm using harder pressure now with this black make sure that we're getting that really dark lay down of color okay so I'm gonna come in with the um, cold gray one and I'm going to cover this bottom area um, with the cold grey one. Um, let me just get a new cold grey out. And with this base layer, we're going to make sure that we're following the fur direction. So 
So I'm just doing this darker bit of fur that's underneath this layer of fur that's coming over this chest. Again, here where it's going to be quite dark. So this just means we've got that base layer to work on top of now. And here I know it's going to be quite dark again. Right. Okay, so I've now got my cold grey fur. I'm going straight in with a darker cold grey. And I'm just going to start darkening up this fur. Again, following that fur direction. Blending it outwards. So you can see already that we are going to have to darken quite a bit of this fur up, and that's fine. I'd rather go too light than not dark enough. Sorry, I'm just repositioning myself in my chair. And I'm going to just bring that cold grey far down this way as well. I'm going to go over some of this cold grey far with the black. I'm not going straight in yet with the black, we're just going to build up the surrounding tones first. And then if we need to go darker with these tones, we can, but we've already started to build up that depth in the fur. I think this, this little guy is going to make a cute greeting card. <laughs> right. I'm then going to take my cold grey free and with the cold grey free we're just coming back into this corner and blending it outwards into where we've got that cold grey one. And then I'm going to take my cold grey one again, I'm just going to go over that cold grey free, blend outwards. So a lot of this is a little bit of back and forth, but we're just really building up that tonal value to our cat. Um, got my white again, just coming in and burnishing. And then my uh, cold grey four again. And I'm just going to bring in some darker. Just because that white does lighten it up a little bit. But I'm not going all in. We're just kind of creating some individual clumps of fur now. And up underneath here. And then it's going to start getting darker. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring that Okay, 
Right, I'm going to take my one grey four and just go over this. Okay, and keep that one grey four going across. I'm just going to map out so that's that bit there. So, yeah, so we want this to be quite dark up to about here okay so this is still the one grey four so hopefully by the time um obviously you will have finished this tutorial but i'm hoping by the end of this tutorial I'm going to have a page on my website, so for people that don't want to join the Facebook group, um, don't want to chat in there, don't have Facebook, um, all the links to materials and resources will be on my website um, for you to download. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> right, we need to really start darkening some of this up so um i'm gonna come back in actually with my dark indigo now i know i want this area to be darker so i'm just going to blend that dark indigo into that warm gray four i'm not going over all of it i'm just starting to blend it in together Okay, and I'm going to bring in a little bit of that blue in here. We're going to darken this up, but I'm not pressing hard. You can see I'm holding the pencil quite high up. I'm just bringing that blue in over the top very gently. We're adding more depth to this bit of fur. That's all we're doing. Right, okay, now I'm going to take my dark sepia. Okay, so with the dark sepia, I'm just going to go over this dark indigo now. Blending into that black area as well. coming around here as well so I'm making sure with this dark sepia that I'm getting those darkest parts of this fur mapped in we're just focusing on the darker areas and it's going to come across this body the dark sepia. And up. So you can see as well I'm following that fur direction all the time. And you can already see how dark this bit of fur is compared to the rest of our kitten. But it'll all make sense. And it's looking a little messy, so the this stage you can see just how messy it is. We're just working on our layers, building it up. So don't worry if your drawings get to this point and you just think, oh gosh, it's just a mess. I don't know what's, what I'm doing. Keep building your layers, which usually you just need to keep going. Add a couple more layers. Sometimes it only just needs one more layer. Sometimes it needs a couple. 
but don't get disheartened we all go through it we all go through this stage I'm just going to use a bit of a harder pressure here to get that blend in. I'm going to go back to my black, lighter pressure. And again, I'm just making sure I'm getting a nice smooth blend. So this is where I'm just starting to try and get a more finished and polished look on this section of fur. Okay, back to the dark sepia. Okay, you can see now we're starting to really get a smoother blend and it's looking a lot better. I've now got my warm grey five. And I'm just going to come over that cold grey. And I'm using shorter strokes now because I want to start to get this looking nice and tidy. Even though the fur itself isn't tidy, you can see there's a lot going on. I want my pencil strokes to start looking tidier. Because we've just all we've been doing at the moment is building up that base layer. And building up the colours. Going back to the um, dark sepia and we're just mapping in where it's going to be quite dark again. Not a lot of it is dark but a little bit. Just catching the edge here where it's a bit darker. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with my warm grey 4 over the top of all of this area. Um, and then the cold grey 1. I'm using the cold grey one because it's just going to help smooth this out a little, um, acts as like a blender. don't want to use the white, don't want to lighten it that much, but the cold grey one is just going to help with that blend and it's going to help with that smoothness that we're looking for. Okay, and then I can take my black and again I'm just going to come in blend into that dark sepia I'm just building up this layer again right and I'm just going to bring that black across here because it's quite dark Um, and then I'm going to take the warm grey 5 again so again just building up this layer of colour and then the dark sepia Draw over your tape and that way you're getting that nice smooth line. Okay, 
back to the one by four, uh, one by five, sorry. Okay, I'm going to take my uh, cold grey two. Just going to start darkening up here a little bit more. Um, cold grey three. Yeah, this is just darkening up some of those shadows. Just because we started to bring in this darker fur. I'm just bringing in some darker details. Especially closer to this darker fur. We just want it to look a little darker and more smoothly blended. And the cold grey too again. Okay, I'm happier with that now. Right, uh, warm grey too. And I'm just going to darken. I'm going to start bringing in this little gap patch of fur that we've not done. I'm just darkening some of this chest up with a warm grey too. Um, I'm also going to take that cold grey free, use a very light pressure, but again, just bringing it under that chin. So when I say light pressure, holding it halfway up the pencil, and then I'm just sort of glazing the pencil over the top of that shadow, and that's just help me, helping to darken that up, and then you can add a few little shadowed areas. Okay, right, let's get this bit of fur in. So it is warmer in colour, so we're going to use our warm grey one as a base layer. So that's the base layer in, and I can see already I need to add more definition to the fur here, but we'll do that afterwards. Right, I'm then going to take my um, warm grey free, and with the warm grey free, I'm going to start bringing in that detail to show that this fur is a little bit darker than all here. Again, I'm blending up from this darker bit of fur. Now, I do think that I want to bring my slice tool in. Um, so you can use your razor um, at this point, or your slice tool. Um, I do recommend getting a slice tool if you haven't already. Um, but for this area especially, um, the slice tool is going to be very beneficial. We've done a lot of this tutorial without the slice tool, but definitely feeling like I need it now. And I'm just bringing that warm grey fray across here. Um, I'm going to take my brown ochre. Got a bit of a brownish yellow tone, very lightly. And the beige red. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Right, sorry. I sneezed and we're back to it. So back in with the beige red. Give that pinkish tone in here. And then the warm grey too. So you can see it doesn't take too long to build up the base layers. So it's just... What we're doing is really just building up all those base layers of colours. Um, I'm going to take the warm grey four. Uh, no, I'm gonna, sorry, <laughs> I'm confusing you all. I'm going to take the nugget. Um, we need to just blend this brownish tone into here. 
Um, so yeah, we're building up the base layers, lots of base layers to get that colour that we want and then we're building on top of that colour with our details. Right, and then I'm going back to the warm grey too, over the top of that nugget to blend that in. And with this warm grey too, I'm just going to bring in very lightly some little details and some more tonal value. Take the warm grey one as well. I don't want it to end up too dark. It's quite light here, but still want some tonal depth to this part of the body. And the cold grey one. And then I'm going to take that white over all that area that we've just done and just burnish. That, that warm grey area that we've just added in. And this nugget. Okay. Right, I've just sharpened my white and I'm just going to bring in some harder pressure as I bring in some of this fur detail over some of this darker. So I'm drawing in little strokes of white fur lines. If you've got something like the Pablo or the Luminance White, a softer white, use that. Because that will really show up. But I'm just kind of doing this over because it's going to soften, soften all this down. Okay, right. So I've now got my slice tool. So if you haven't got a slice tool, don't worry. You don't necessarily need this. And I'm just going to bring in some detail. And it's not going to be obvious straight away. But it's, all I'm doing is just removing some of this pigment. And creating some really loose flyaway hairs. Oops. Just building up the texture on this part of the cat. And then we can come in with the one grey five underneath where I've just sliced that. I'll use the slice tool. Just, up oh, and the one grey three. Just darken up some of these areas. And then I can take my white, where I've taken that slice tool, and just go over with the white. And then back to the warm grey free. Oops. My white. And the warm grey free again. Right, and then I'm going to start darkening some of this uh, cat up. So going back to my cold grey one, and I'm just going to build up the layers of cold grey on this side of the kitten. Cold grey two. Remember, as you're doing this, you're darkening, um, you're following the fur direction as you're darkening up some of these areas. Back to the cold grey one. And 
because at this point I'm not really looking at my reference photo now I'm looking at my drawing and I'm having a look and I'm seeing what does my drawing need like we do on all the pieces and I'm just darkening up the areas that I want darker on my drawing to make it look nicer so back to the warm grey free so you don't need to do this stage if you're happy with where your drawing is you could leave it I'm just gonna come in and build up some more colour for white and sometimes it's worth doing this stage when especially with an original coming in and just working that little bit extra on a piece I'm gonna take my one grey four uh, one grey five and just bring that up a little bit more so so that it looks like it's still underneath that fur. I'm taking my black. And my dark sepia. And the one grey five, uh, one grey five, just to darken. Remember, we want everything to look blended and smooth. And I'm using the white to burnish any areas where I just want to knock it back a little bit. Okay, so I'm moving across the side. To uh, one grey two, put all those pencils down. Shouldn't be holding them all in my hand. Darkening up along here a little bit more as well. So this is like the final details. We're just coming in, building up some details. And then the cold grey one. And the white again, just to burnish. Okay, so I think I want to darken some of the face up. So let me move you uh, down or move the drawing down. Right, so I just want to darken some of this chin up again. So I've got my warm grey too. I'm just coming in and building up that colour. Um, and the gold. Back to the dark sepia. I'm just going to ever so gently with that dark sepia in the white. And then the cold grey one. Which needs to be sharper. And uh, I'm just going to come in here as well. Okay. Oops. <laughs> right up to that edge always going right up to that edge um my cinnamon i'm 
and I'm just going to take the warm grey free very gently on that side of the lip. Okay, and staying with the warm grey free, just gently darkening some of this area. Okay, I'm happier with that. And I still want to darken um, these markings. So I'm going to take my um, nugget and again, just going to come in. And then over the top of that with the one grey two. Um, and I'm going to get the cold grey one. Back to the nugget. Okay, and again, just down here. One grey two. And then the white. Okay. And then I'm also just going to take the white um, into these ears. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soften these areas out so I'm just bringing that white in over these gaps and just softening that fur out and then clean your white off and then we'll go to the other side oops and just do the same here, just soften and clean the pencil. Clean the white off. Okay, right, we've got these whiskers to draw in. And we're going to use a cold grey one and we're going to get it nice and sharp. So the cold grey one. And there. And you lift lifting your pencil off the page as you are um coming to the end of your whisker and again with the cold grey one just going to draw in those straggly hairs so i'm just doing random little hairs coming off the side of that face and we've got them the side of this body Just going to create some little stray hairs on the top of the head as well. A few extra ones. You don't really get many in before. Okay. And then we've got, if I just move the drawing again so that you can see, uh, these whiskers on the side of the face. So I'm going to do that one first. So that's, and I'm just going to draw that whisker in. We've got a whisker coming down here. 
let me screw so I'm gonna fade that one off there and then I can just bring that there so we're just doing it one whisker at a time just making sure that we're constantly tapering those edges I'm doing these very lightly I don't want mine to be very noticeable just want a nice light whisker and again I'm just going to come in along this edge some little fur strokes like so okay and then the last little bits of whiskers along here and some stray coat so I'm just going to do the stray coat and it's a bit longer on this side so I'm just going to make sure I get some longer bits of fur in and then we can just Bring in there, I'm just going to darken. Okay, just going in with my cold grey free. Just a little bit darker there. My one grey two. And I think I am happy with this little kitty now. Um, let's have a look. Oh, there's a little bit there. So I'm a cold grey one. Just on this bridge of the snows. And then the beige red. Followed by the white. One grey two. Oops. And then I'm just going to do the cold grey one over this muzzle area. Okay, let's have another look here. Are we happy? One grey one. Okay. I would say that I am happy with that. So let's zoom out. So here you can see the full drawing of our little kitten. And I'm really happy with how she's turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed drawing this piece. I, I've really loved drawing this little kitten. Um, she's uh, turned out really nicely. I hope you've learned a lot about uh, white fur on white paper and not to be too scared to go dark. Obviously, we've gone quite dark with this white fur, especially down here at the bottom. Don't be scared of that. Um, but if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, there is probably going to be another focus tutorial this month because she didn't take as long as I imagined. Um, so look out for that. Any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you all soon. Bye everybody.